Hello, my name is Katie and I have a confession to make. I admit to being one of those people who thought back in March that things would have returned to normal by now. And yet here we are, it's Labor Day, the coronavirus remains, and we're still being advised to wear masks, to social distance, to sanitize. And although places and gatherings have opened up somewhat, things are definitely far from normal. Some people have designated 2020 as the worst year ever, and it's not even over yet. While this year has definitely caught many of us by surprise and caused a lot of disappointment, I want to challenge you to not give up on 2020 just yet. There are still four months to go, and I think that's more than enough time for God to use you and me for his plans and purposes. After all, this year and its general unpleasantness didn't catch God unawares, and he's certainly not hanging his head feeling disheartened or defeated. In fact, as our omniscient and sovereign Lord, he not only knew about in advance, but he ordained this time. While we may not fully understand God's ways, especially when we're still in the middle of everything, we know he's always good and he's constantly on mission. God is always working to draw people near to him so that they may be saved and grow to look more like his son, Jesus Christ. So in a sense, this year has been business as usual for the maker of the universe. He's still sustaining, breathing life into, loving, forgiving and redeeming his creation. And if he's still on mission, we can and should be too. Let me share with you a few encouraging verses from Philippians on how we can finish 2020 well. Paul writes in Philippians 4, 6 and 7, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. First of all, it says, don't worry. I know, easier said than done, right? Uh, this year we may have more questions than answers, more losses than gains, more disappointments than blessings, but God is still in control and he is always with us. These are truths that are all throughout both the Old and New Testaments. But can we, let, can we try to continue to rest in who God is and put our focus there and let him carry our burdens? He's willing and he's able. One way we can do this is to talk to him. The next verse says we should pray about everything. There's no concern or request too big or too small for God. 1 Peter 5, 7 says we should cast all our cares on God because he cares for us. Think about your best friend or a person in your life you love and with whom you share everything. God is not only our friend, but he's our loving Heavenly Father. He wants us to share with him as any two people would who have a closer relationship. And as a bonus, he's also the best and most patient listener you will ever know. I don't know about you, but I'm so grateful that God is patient with me and that he loved me before I even decided to follow him. So when we pray, we should also express to him our gratefulness for who he is and what he has done in our lives. We have a great God who is full of grace, and it's his gift of grace that saves us, according to Ephesians 2.8. 2, and what does Paul say will result from our prayers? We will experience God's inexplicable peace. If there's anything lacking in our world today, it's that on all levels, globally, nationally, personally. No doubt our world is broken and hurting and conflict is everywhere. But God is our peace in every trial and storm, not because he removes them, but because he helps us through them. Verse seven goes on to say, God's peace will guard our hearts and minds. It reminds me of Proverbs 4.23, which warns us to guard our hearts. And to do this, we are told in Psalm 119 to store up God's word in our hearts. And in Romans 12, too, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And while those verses urge us to do the guarding or the keeping, verse 7 in Philippians says that God's peace accomplishes this for us. And the word used here for guard means to protect, as in to keep inside a fortress or a castle. 
But then, Paul adds, as we live in Christ Jesus, which is our part. Do you want to know how to have perfect peace in a troubling season? Abide in him. To abide in Christ is to stay connected to him, the vine. At KAC, there are many opportunities for us as women to stay connected to our Savior. Uh, there's a women's prayer group that meets every Wednesday morning, um, and there's the church-wide prayer meeting that meets every Wednesday night. Both are on Zoom. And for moms, Moms Every Step is starting up uh, September 23rd, and they'll be meeting every other Wednesday evening. We also have a Tuesday morning and evening Bible studies starting up uh, the last week of September. And I'm really excited because next Monday night, September 14th, we're having a really special women's event where we will spend time together in worship and prayer for the upcoming season. So ladies, can I challenge you to not let the disappointments of this year distort your outlook on or hinder whatever plans God has for you for the rest of 2020? Instead of joining with the throngs of people demanding a do-over, let's stay on mission and keep abiding and growing in Christ. We're in the final quarter of 2020. Whether you've been thriving or struggling this year, remember God is on our side and no matter what plague or pestilence comes our way in the next four months, we still have the opportunity to turn this year around through the strength and power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.